Stop me if you've heard this before. Georgia just got another defensive line recruit commitment. I'm sorry. Is it? But we had just gotten one, and then before that, we had just gotten another one, and then do we have too many defensive linemen? Oh, no, wait. That's impossible. Let's talk about it today on the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back. This is Locked On Bulldogs. We're Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. More on them in a moment. Thanks, FanDuel. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Daniel, like you said, stop us if you've heard this before. If you're listening to us over on the podcast side, head on over to the YouTube side. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're on the YouTube side, head over to the audio side, wherever you find podcasts. Subscribe there, download, so you can have us with us wherever you go. And you don't have to see our ugly faces if you're on the YouTube side. If you're on the audio side and want to see just how ugly men can be, get on over to YouTube. <laughs> This is how Yikes. it works. Um, what a we, sell. We are this talking, <laughs> we are talking uh, simply about Kirby Smart taking what he wants, getting what he wants, filling holes in the defense one more time. And like you said, Daniel, there is no need to say too many defensive linemen because it's the SEC, it's defense, it's rotation, and it's guys who do, do transfer portals, NIL, injury, more games as we as we go to 12 team playoff you need these kind of guys and what if i was to tell you that the type of guy we need is oh six four three fifty and moves like he is a point guard big old fella that's got some great footwork um okbogo um the defensive lineman commit big kid out of north carolina Hmm. um kind of a small school Maybe some lesser competition in there. We've we've seen that before. But uh, don't sleep on the Georgia Bulldogs that have been pulled from the great state of North Carolina, Clint, because um, there have been a few over the years, and there have been some absolute superstars. Um, uh, this kid looks like a great, um, great, young, very raw prospect. And as you said which is really the point to start with. You cannot have too many defensive linemen because the schedule is going yeah. to keep keep expanding. There are going to be more games on it. And Kirby likes a healthy rotation. Trey Scott likes him a healthy rotation uh, in and out, fresh bodies on the field all the time. Kirby has shown over and over again consistently that if you're a defensive lineman and you want to be developed, and you want to uh, make it make your way to the National Football League, and you want to earn yourself playing time on the field, that if you are good enough, you will see the field at Georgia. He is not afraid to rotate the likes of Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt, first-round draft picks. He's not afraid to rotate guys like that out of the, um, out of the game, keep them fresh, and put in albeit maybe lesser players, but guys with fresh legs, there's plenty of opportunity and plenty of need for defensive talent. And you can't teach this guy's size, Clint. You can't teach 6'4". You can't teach 320 with with athleticism and agility like that. Um, so I think it's a big pickup for Trey Scott. I want to talk about what I think is the craziest thing about this guy um, that is like, I'm going to say it. And if you haven't heard it before in the second segment, I'm going to say it. And if you haven't heard it before, you're going to think to yourself, he's, he just made that up. Like he's clearly making that up right now, but it's several things, but condescending. Yes. (laughs) Fan talk. Host yes. of a podcast that has sponsors, yes, but mm-hmm. we are not liars. We no. will not lie to you to your face. So I got some what I think is the most surprising and most promising news about this young man uh, coming up right after this. But first, we want you to know about FanDuel, Daniel. We do. FanDuel is fantastic. Get all those bets that you want to have. Uh, mm-hmm. By the way, if you could still get Ronald Acuna MVP odds, you can't. Get it. They and took that down. Should. They said, they, we don't like losing money. 
<laughs> we <laughs> want to keep the money. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to keep it the fanduel.com slash locked on. It's the most trusted sports book for locked on podcasts, the official sports book of locked on podcasts, mm-hmm. and the official sports book of locked on Bulldogs. It's where Daniel and I make all of our bets. Mm-hmm. We love the point spreads during the season. We're going to have a whole entire week coming up here in the offseason where we talk about our best bets for the upcoming year. We do over unders, win totals. <sighs> It's going to be a doozy. Daniel and I love it every single year. It's Can't one wait. of the best seasons of the entire year. FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Right now, when you make a deposit as a first-time user of FanDuel and you don't get that first bet, it doesn't hit, they will give you $1,000 in bonus bets right back to you. FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Make every moment more over at FanDuel.com. All right. Well, Clint teased it a bit uh, earlier. First of all, I love the rhetoric when Georgia signs a player. And then here they come. Here they come as sure as clockwork. They're in the comments right now. They're in the comments right now. Because this is what Brian Smith told us last week on the recruiting. He said, hey, you we have we have like you said, we have defensive line commits for days. And he said, but the one thing you can't get a tradition, a, a stalwart nose tackle, a zero tech. You can get one tech, you can get shade, but a zero tech guy that's this size. And he said, if Georgia gets that, watch out. Well, hope, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. We, Check back with us. We got that guy. Check back in the comments right now. Go ahead and scroll through there. Go ahead and respond to them because they love the responses. They're going to eat up your responses. Um, it was a three star kit. Well, Georgia just throw, oh, Big deal, Georgia signs another three-star kid. Three-star, three-star kid. It's a three-star kid. Let me let me explain some things to the good people, Clint. Number one, you're a fan of Florida. And you had this guy on campus for an official visit and offered him a scholarship. So... Say less about what a bad player he is because he chose to play at the University of Georgia. Number two, and this one is for everyone, um, Kirby Smart is better at, re- at evaluating talent yeah, this is than it. you are at anything. Literally anything. Literally any of if, the things that you're good at. I'm not sure what your you job are is. As good at your job as Kirby is at recruiting. Mm-hmm. And, and understanding talent and picking talent, you would be the owner of said company. You would be, and if you are the owner of the company that you work for, that company would be successful. Yeah. So Kirby's better at evaluating talent than you are. He's also better at evaluating talent than every recruiting insider in the world. And we said yeah. this on last week's show, and we'll continue to say it Bears this repeating. week. If they were that good, the recruiting gurus, Kirby Smart would pay them five times what they're making now to come work for him. Mizzou, Vanderbilt, anybody that is middling, that needs to go ahead and get a leg up or wants to stay on top, would, of course, say, find me the three stars that should be five stars. Give me the two stars that should be four stars. Let me just say case in point right here. Guy by the name of Barton Simmons, that if you follow recruiting, you might know, used to be the national director of recruiting for 24 7 sports. Uh-huh. Do you know what he does for a living now? Tell He's me. a defensive backs coach at Vanderbilt because he was good at his job. And Vanderbilt, 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 come on, came and said, Hey, do you want this job? And, and he said, Oh, uh, yeah. Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's seven times better than the job I currently have. So, yeah, Kirby's better at evaluating talent than any of these guys. So I don't care about stars. I don't care about these three stars. Do we like getting five stars? Yes. Is that fun? Yes. yes. Are five stars often good? Yes, that they are. Yes, they are. Are three stars that Kirby Smart recruits often good? Yes, they also are. Very good. Um, here's the thing, though, about this kid. Why would this kid especially... I don't care about the star rankings, Clint, because this young man's about to enter his senior year of high school. But he is, Daniel. He he, he is. He is. But that's a little misleading. I it think, is. I, I think people here, oh, of course, you know. So I I get it. A big kid like that entering senior year, you really have to wait for him to get that fourth year in the weight room and that fourth year mm-hmm. under a. Now let me stop you there, Clint, oh. because. 
He played his first snap of organized football in his life. Okay. Wow. Last year as a junior. Well, that's intriguing. It is intriguing to say the least because when he played said first snap of organized football in his life. Yeah. He had 61 tackles, 11 for a loss, and four sacks. So this man who calls himself Nigerian Nightmare, which, by the way, Christian Okoye, uh, shout out to you, the original mm. Nigerian Nightmare. Uh, this man said, I suppose I can come out and do I, this. What do you want me to do, coach? I've never played before. What do you want me to do, coach? And I coach had to said, dislodge, dislodge this man in front of me and then go tackle the man with the ball. Okay, I could do that 61 times in the first time I've ever done organized football. Ever. So – yeah, he's got three stars. He earned those three stars in one year of playing football. But that that's because he went on all these circuits and camps. And nope, just one year of playing North Carolina high school football, and wild. scouts were that's like, well, we got to give him something. Like, this kid's not nothing. Yeah, I'm not worried about this at all. Let's come back in segment three, though, Clint, and let's talk about the real hero mm -hmm. of this offseason. Um and his name is Trey Scott. There it is. Trey Scott is the real hero. We've talked about this many, many times before. This man is a national treasure. He's a Georgia treasure. He's Kirby Smart treasure. And if you don't understand what Trey Scott means to this program and you don't give him his due credit because we're talking about development of Kirby. Kirby can do that. Here's how Kirby does that. Mm -hmm. Say that. Say that. Kirby is smart he knows well, his job is literally architect. and figuratively <laughs> yes he knows that his job is to architect and structure a program and a school that is going to get kids the right coaches so that he can oversee the coaches the coaches can oversee them and they can go get paid in the nfl which by the way go look at every georgia player that's getting paid right now in the nfl and ask me about do they care about their NIL money or they care about their NFL contracts? Because every one of them will say, I don't care about NIL. That's short sighted. I'll go get paid much more later. You look at a kid like this, and this is Trey Scott in its finest. This is Kirby Smart trusting a man, going and getting the big fish, going and getting these guys, developing them, not only under Kirby, but Trey Scott himself. That's what makes Georgia programs so successful is from top to bottom depth, not just at the not just top heavy with Kirby. Mm -hmm. Not just coordinators and and guys coming and going at other programs that are on the decline that are that are looking for yep. retirement soon. Not those mm -hmm. programs. By the way, that's condescending language towards Alabama. Alabama fan in the comments. They're not picking up on that. Okay. They're not picking up what you're putting more. down. That's Trey Scott Daniel. That's who this man is. Trey Scott, if you recall, been on this staff for quite some time. Yeah. Been around for a minute. And Trey Scott, early in his career, Clint, at Georgia, caught a little heat from Georgia fans. Now, Georgia fans have been known to let a few fly a little sure. bit prematurely. Sure. They've been known to get caught with their pants down a little bit, saying saying some things that they shouldn't have been saying. Okay? Um, not, not unlike this podcast. Not. Well, I said Georgia fans. So, so present company especially. They've been known to, to say some things, and they yeah. said some things about uh, one Trey Scott. He missed out on a couple of recruits early in his Georgia career. People saying, yeah. oh, he's losing recruits to Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. He's losing recruits to other SEC schools. I'm not sure Trey Scott's the answer. Trey Scott can't get it done. My son is he, – he enjoys the Madden. He likes to play the Madden, the okay. video game. Okay, sure. And – He's got the updated rosters. He's got the new rosters. And he decides he's going to go and he's going to put together the all. He's just going to get every. He's going to collect them all. All right. He's going to get right. all the Georgia players. And Two he's, different systems coming together here. And so he's just scrolling through, organizing, orchestrating these trades for, you know, with NFL, uh, other NFL teams, and just combing the rosters for Georgia players and Clint oh, when you start to put the defensive linemen out there that are currently playing in the NFL what you find is that you don't have a, a, a starting roster you've got yourself a full-blown depth chart you got a, two you deep. got a two deep there where 
That defensive line is stacked on stacked for days, and all of it is one Trey Scott. Um, and there's just more where that came from. I love the comment from Brian that Georgia, this is a position of need for Georgia. This is absolutely a position that Kirby Smart's leaned on in the past. And now you solidify this. You put that together with the athletic, physical yes, specimens sir. that are already yes, there, sir. with the edge talent that's already there. And this Georgia defensive line is going to be a frightful thing for years yeah. to come. Yeah. By the way, 199, thanks for being here with us. We love uh, you. Bonfire.com slash store slash 199. This is a little, this is like AA. Trey Scott is like the AA of college football. Interesting. All of a sudden, you all, you all out here getting really mad at the Braves for letting Freddie Freeman go and Dansby Swanson. And he just says, well, what if I can tell you that I have no talent and I can get a guy for a tenth of the salary who plays better shortstop and is an all star and a guy who's leading the league in home runs and RBIs? I was just going to say, is Trey Scott leading the league in home runs and RBIs? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, and you are. He is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's that's what Trey Scott is. The guy don't miss. So yes, will he see a star bump? Uh, more than likely, he will. We, we don't care about it because guess what? He's Kirby the same and guy. Trey are saying, I again, industry insiders. I don't care. He's our dude, and he's going to be fine. We've done this before. We'll do it again. And he's the raw talent. We can make him into something good. Uh, this has been Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We'll see you next time where maybe we'll have a little list and maybe some SEC Ooh, I fun. like the lists. Uh, when we come back, we'll see you all then. See ya.